Hey, hey guys, it's Ryan with My Listing Club. In this video, we'll be continuing on with the educational series, How to Build an Online Business with the My Listing WordPress theme. As we've done throughout this series, we'll be using the My Listing Project template as our guide. You can get your hands on this template and learn more about it by going to the My Listing Club website, that's mylisting.club, scrolling down the homepage just a bit and clicking on the My Listing Project template card. This page is gonna walk you through what this template is all about. Uh, at the very top, you'll see I outline which versions of the technologies I've tested it up to. More often than not, it's going to be uh, the latest because I'm always staying on top of this uh, template every week. So uh, WordPress is the latest version, most likely. My listing, the latest version, most likely, and the same with Elementor Pro. Okay, Scrolling on down, you'll see everything that's included in this uh, at a high level. But as you are going to see in this video and throughout this series if you've started from the beginning you'll get to see how this project template looks at the very beginning and how much is included in there um, the walkthrough video you're going to get that right now um, the change log i'm updating this project template i would say every other day sometimes multiple times per day uh, it's, it's pretty frequent so this will kind of tell you what's going on uh, with this template you can buy this template as a one-off purchase if you buy a starter site, I will also include a copy of it uh, with that purchase. If you want my ongoing changes to this template, meaning you can download this template as many times as you want, uh, you have to be an ultimate member for that. Um, also my care plan clients, they can request a, a fresh copy of the template at any time. Okay, so enough about that. Let's look at where we left off here um, in our template. Uh, as we go along in this series, I've, as I've said, if you use this template and you follow a top-down, left-to-right approach, in almost nearly every case of building a My Listing uh, website and an online business, uh, that process is going to work for you. Now, every project, every business is different, so you might need to adjust a couple cards, like the order, uh, based on your preference or needs, and some cards won't even apply. Okay, but it, in general, top-down, left-to-right is will work for you. So. Looking at the my listing column, we're still working in the my listing column. It's a, it's a beast of a column. There's a lot to do uh, in regards to my listing alone, uh, in addition to everything else you got to do on a web a my listing website. But just the my listing specific stuff. Uh, we are now at a point where we are inching very, very close to starting to build out our listing types. We've got a few more things to do. Uh, next up, as you see here on my screen, is the single listing contact forms. Those are the, the forms that go into the listing so the listing owners can be, be contacted. Uh, I thought it would also be a good idea to wrap up in this video, uh, wrap into this video, spam protection, because they kind of go hand in hand. Um, so I thought that would be a good topic for this video, those two things. Okay, so, so let's go ahead and get into these, um, starting with the uh, single listing contact forms. So let me pull up the, uh, so I'm on my demo site here, clean site, clean, clean site, uh, very minimal stuff going on. I haven't built anything out really. Um, there's a few plugins in here, some of the core plugins I use. I've gone ahead and installed Contact Form 7, um, so we can look at a few things there, uh, even though I don't recommend it. So my listing bundles contact form seven with the theme, but I recommend not using it for the following reasons to name a few. It's difficult to use. It's got, a, the functionality is very minimal. Um, you can add a bunch of um, other plugins, uh, add-ons, things to, and things to make it do more things. But you, at that point, you're just introducing more conflicts, more plugins you gotta maintain slow down your site even more, all those types of things. And then in general, it just slows down your site because Contact Form 7 will load assets. Um, you know, For example, like CSS, on every post and page of your website, even if there's not even a form there. So really not good stuff. Um, instead, I recommend building with Elementor Pro Forms. And I've got a guide on how to switch from Contact Form 7 to Elementor Pro Forms. Um, the club even also has templates for these single listing contact forms. So you can download a pre-made template um, that I used when I was building a particular starter site. Okay, so those are some things to keep in mind. So 
let's look at the differences here um, between Contact Form 7 and Elementor Pro. So if we go into, uh, let's see here, Contact, Contact Forms, and by default, there's a this contact form right here is created for you. Um, so you can see, you can go in there and you can tweak your form, um, add some stuff in here. It's not terrible. It just, you know, part of it, it just looks like this thing, you know, which it was. It was built, you know, a very, very long time ago. It's hardly changed at all. Um, it just doesn't scream um sexy doesn't scream uh, that it's innovating that it's modern in any way it just seems very archaic so now if we look at let's go to a page here so if i drop in a form so here we're dropping we're dropping in an elementary form here and you can just see right away that just if you're used to using Elementor at all, that just the modern how modern it is. Um, all the different types of fields that you can do here, um, the dynamic how easy it is to add dynamic information into here. Um, it's just unlocks. It's just easy to easier to unlock and work with more advanced stuff that you can do with your forms. You can do crazy stuff with your forms. Um, you can do multi-step forms. After you submit a form, you can. You can send the, the information to like MailChimp or MailerLite or any of those types of email marketing platforms. You can collect the submissions um, in your database. So if someone submits a, uh, if someone goes to a listing and inquires and fills out the form, obviously the listing owner, you want them to be notified, but this is also gonna collect a, a copy of that email. So if the listing owner is like, hey, I didn't receive that, you can then go into your the back end of your website here under Elementor, assuming you have this turned on. So let's go to settings here, experiments. If we scroll down to stable, we see form submission. So if you have form submission turned on, you'll see this under Elementor, you'll see the submissions area. So any, any form that gets sent will get captured in here and you can have a record. Um, so you can go back to that listing owner and say, hey, I'm, I'm seeing a record here that it was sent on this date from this person and so on and so forth. Um, you're not going to get that stuff with contact form seven, at least not out of the box. Maybe there's an add on for that. Uh, it's just not there. Um, editing form templates. Yeah. Yeah. Good luck with that. It's just, it's, it's terrible. Um, but with my list with, uh, elementary pro forms, I mean, it's all kinds of stuff you can do. Uh, and like I said, if you go to the My Listing Club and then go under Menu, Resources, and then you go under Templates down here, let's sort those by Templates, and then let's just type in the word Contact. You'll see that I've got a bunch of resources here related to Contact Forms. So, for example, here's a single listing Contact Form, and if you're a member, you can just you can download. Um, download this template. Let's go ahead and look at what this looks like on the front end. So here's an example. Like you, if you import this template, you're going to get this pre-made form. Now to build this in contact form seven. Yeah. I mean, good luck with that. This, yeah, I wish you well on that. It's just, it's probably not going to happen. Okay. Um, yeah, so that's, that's, that's my thing about contact form seven. Um, and how I recommend you don't use it, use Elementor Pro instead. Um, yeah, and there, like I said, there's the guide on how to replace that on the club website, how to replace Contact Form 7 with Elementor Pro. Um, uh, trying to think what else I need to get into on that. So yeah, I just showed you what it looks like, a form, an Elementor form. Now, let me, let me show you how to add one. Maybe, maybe you've never added a form. So that's a good thing. Let's look at that. So if you go to a listing type, uh, let's look at the field first. So if you add, if you add this contact email field here, what my listing does out of the box by default is 
the theme developers are assuming that you're going to use contact form seven just because they bundled it, bundled it in with, um, with the theme. So what I, what I do is instead, like I said, use Elementor Pro. Let me, let me try to find, let me pull up a starter site here and I'll show you what I do instead. All right, so here we're looking at the back end of the Val starter site. Let's pull up a, let's pull up the venue listing type because that's the form that we were looking at um, right here. So what I do is for uh, the contact email, I put this, I, I leave that in there, but what I say is this is only required if you wish to have an email sent to an address other than the address you used when creating your account. So if you follow my guide for imp implementing Elementor Pro Forms as your single listing form, it's automatically going to send to the listing owner by default. So they don't even need, you, you don't even need to add this field if you don't want to. Uh, but what this field allows you to do is it gives the listing owners an opportunity to specify a different email. So maybe they registered for your My Listing website as uh, hello at domain.com, but then they're like, well, we want, we want our form submissions to go to a, an email distribution list within our company. So instead of using that hello at domain.com, we want to be able, they want to be able to go in there and put in, um, team at domain.com so that all of their team members get that email. Okay. So that's, that's how that would work. And that's how that's built. And then if you go to the single page, content and tabs. I have the form placed in a, in a tab I call contact and media. Uh, and then I have a table for the contact information. And then one of the rows is, uh, is the email field there. Again, that's only if they happen to use that field. Okay. And if they do, then that's going to output the email here on this line as part of this contact information block. Okay, but we're kind of getting away from uh, forms, which we're talking about here. But again, here's the form that's created with Elementor. And you can see here that I dynamically populated the message field. Uh, and, and they can go in and they can change this, but it gives them a starting point of what they might send to the listing owner. Uh, I don't even know if you can do that with Contact Form 7. Uh, maybe you can. Maybe there's a placeholder that you can put in there. I haven't really explored it because of all the other issues I see with Contact Form 7. But maybe you can. Um, yeah, so that's how you add it to your single listing. Um, I think that about covers covers. Yeah, let's let's go ahead and consider that part done. Let's jump back into our project template and then let's look at let's talk about spam protection. So by default, my listing is going to include the option of enabling recaptcha for several areas within your website to help fight spam. However, this like contact form seven, I don't recommend you do this either. Recaptcha is notorious for having random issues and slowing down websites. Instead, I recommend the Clean Talk plugin, which is lightweight, easy to set up, and prevents spam for all areas of your website. User registration, single listing contact forms, listing submissions, general contact forms, and so on and so forth. Um, if you still want to give recaptcha a shot, uh, I've listed in the project template the areas where you can configure recaptcha. So you first need to go out and set up recaptcha, and then there's different versions of it. So whether it's version two, version three, version two invisible, or version three invisible, there's all these different versions. And then the vendors, whether it's the my listing developers or Elementor or Contact Form Seven or any any of the plugin authors, I've found that none of them have a clear answer as to which version you should use. And then to make matters worse, it's, it's, it's flaky. So reCAPTCHA is very flaky. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. And then on top of all of that, it's, sl it's one of the biggest, biggest things, biggest solutions that can slow down a website. reCAPTCHA is a speed killer, performance killer. Okay, so all of those things are why I don't recommend you use it. But 
if you do want to use recapture still, you know, there you can go, there's various areas. So within the actual contact form, um, seven, you can go to integration and there's this recapture area where you can do that. So again, you got to set up recapture, hope you get the version right. You got to come back here and set up the integration under contact form seven. And then you still got to go to all the other areas of your my listing website to configure it, whether it's um, theme tools and under user roles, there's a, a recapture underneath there. Again, no idea which version is going to work and work best. Uh, what else? Listings, settings, and then there's recapture here at the bottom. So this is listing submission forms. Uh, again, you run the risk. If it's something fails, you can, you run the risk of listings not being able to be submitted because they're fight, the end user is customers fighting with recapture um, errors. So, or they just get frustrated depending on which recapture mechanism that you implement. Um, they could get frustrated and leave. Uh, or the, the form just might be broken. You just, it's, it's just very risky. And on, not to mention it slows down, the pro, slows down your site. So um, lots of things to think about. As far as the Elementor Pro form, once you edit the form, one of the fields that you can add is a recapture. Again, is it recapture? Is it recapture three? Where is recapture two? Is is this recapture? Is that version two? It's it's just a mixed bag of good luck figuring it out. Okay. Um, and, and overall, like it just adds to if you're not maintaining your website, like like if you don't have me looking after your website and you know, one day, one of uh, a group of your listing owners is like, "Hey, we can't do X, Y, and Z." You got to track down where you've got that recapture, how you configured it. You may not even think know to think that it's recapture that's causing the issue, and it's just do you want to focus on building your business or do you want to troubleshoot stupid things like this? You know, it's just you got to really think about the administrative overhead that this adds, and it's not just recapture; it all adds up. Uh, all the stuff adds up over to your overhead. Okay, so I think I've covered all of that. Um, again, I recommend Clean Talk instead. Install it. I have a uh, I have a guide for it. Just follow my guide. Now every site's different, but my guide is going to be good for almost every site out there. It it's just uh, it's super easy to set up, and it's just set it up and forget it for the most part. You don't have to go through all of these areas. To set this recapture stuff up, um, there is if you get if you purchase Clean Talk through the club, that helps me a little bit, and it also helps you too. Um, you'll get this advanced monitoring piece uh, that Clean Talk will throw in for you if you go through the club's the club's link. Okay, um, so I would consider doing that. It doesn't cost you anything to do that, if, especially if you're a member already. It doesn't cost you anything to do that. Uh, Trying to think what else here. Um, I think that's about it. Um, thinking on the fly here. Ch -ch -ch -ch. There's anything else that I want to show you? Yes, there is. Okay, yes. Thought of something else. Okay, so let's look at... Go ahead and close this stuff down here. Let's look at the front end of our site. So we've got... We've got contact form seven installed, right? So let's let's inspect our homepage. So this is our homepage. Let's go ahead and uh, let's inspect this page. Yeah, I'll keep this up here. Let's switch to the network tab. I'm gonna disable the cache and hide data URLs. I'm gonna switch to a dark theme just so it's easier for us to see here. At least in my opinion it is. All right, so we've got that. Let's close that little toggle there. Okay, so we've got our network tab open. Let's go ahead and refresh this page, and we'll see the we'll see the assets loading. All right, so there's all of our assets loading here. Let's go ahead and just blow this up here. All right, so if we scroll down here, let's see let's see if we can find this contact form seven stuff. We don't have any contact forms on our homepage. We literally have like two little 
two little boxes um, from my listing. It's got to be in here somewhere. Well, let me see if I can do a sort here. All right. Now, I'm not sure if they call it something else. Maybe they've changed the, the names of the, these resources. Um, da, 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 da. Well, let's try this out. Let's do, let's add a form. Let me make, let me, uh, let's go, let's see, contact and then forms. Oh, I thought of something else that we should talk about here and that's how to add a form to a single, to a, a listing type. So let's, let's do that. So let's, we can grab this short code here. Let's edit our homepage. Let's drop in a contact form seven form. So we're gonna drag our short code there, paste in our contact form seven short code. Okay, there, so we've got our form. Let's go ahead and inspect this again. Well, see that just, that just shows you like that I'm just not able to find it because if we do have a form on this page, the assets are absolutely going to load, and I can't I just can't figure out remember what the name of the asset is. Well, I don't want to keep you keep you uh, having to watch me scroll through this. I'm not sure what the name of that asset, uh, I don't know if I, I don't wanna keep you on here as I, as I search for this, but I know that it's on there and it's, it's gotta be loading that asset in there. Um, another way that we can look is, let's look at contact form seven, uh, as it's uh, exposed with perf matter. So uh, if you follow, follow anything I've said over the years at all, you'll know that I'm a huge fan of the perf matters plugin. Uh, it's just ridiculously amazing. Uh, so let's go ahead and, and use that plugin to see if we can expose the assets of contact form seven. So on our homepage, uh, sorry, before we do that, let's turn on script manager within perf matters. And let me quickly configure it here. So, okay, so what Script Manager does is it, it exposes all of the assets that are loading on your page. Um, so we'll be able to see that contact form step seven coming in here. Okay, there we go. So that's why it was hard to find index.js in styles.css. So let's see here. Index. All right, there it is. Okay, so let's see where that appears. So now I'm not I'm not sorting it by well, it's still sorting by alphabetical. Um I'm not sure how to clear that. Well, let's, let's just start over. Maybe that will clear it. So let's inspect, let's load the page again. Let's inspect it. Network, reload. There we go, okay. 
So we're looking for, what was it again? It was index.js. There we go. So it's down there. And I'm not sure if that's render blocking or not. Um, we can use web page test for that, webpagetest.org. So this is getting a little above and beyond, but if we um, if we test this page, we can find out if just how bad this is. So it's bad enough that it's loading assets, but if we can see if it's actually, if it's a render blocking resource. All right, so while that's testing, you know what, actually I wanna test instead. I wanna test, I wanna test the styles.css. So let's test that instead. Um, uh, you know what, I just brain farted. It's gonna do that regardless, so let's just run this. Okay, while this test is running, um, let's look at how to add a form to your page, to your uh, listings, okay? So let's edit a listing type. Let's assume that you're going to add an Elementor Pro form. Uh, you know what? I'll show you both. I don't want to assume that you're going to do an Elementor Pro form. Pro form. Let's do both. Okay. So you've added your contact email field. That's great. Cool. Uh, that gives them, like I showed you earlier, an alternative. Um, if you're going to use Contact Form 7, that's the only field you need. If you're going to use Elementor Pro, you can use, um, you don't necessarily need this field at all. You can leave, but. Um, you can add this for a backup, as I showed you. Uh, and then on the single page on the front end, content and tabs, profile. Uh, we're gonna add, we're gonna drop in the short code block. And we'll just call this uh, call this email. So in our in this content, we need to, we need the short code. So that's what we need to locate. So we go to our forms, contact, forms. We, we need to grab this short code. And drop that in. So that's our that's our form there. Update. And this was in uh, LT1. So let's go ahead and check out our listings here. LT1. There we go. So that's that's how you would do contact form seven. Now let's say we've got a um, we go let's say we've gone to the club website, we've downloaded a template, or you can build from scratch, or use an Elementor Pro template. But uh, go here and templates. We're going to add new. We're just going to do um, let's call it page. We'll call this listing. Form, listing contact form. All right, and we're just going to add the Elementor Pro form to it. Uh, let's pretend like you've styled it however you wanted. You added the fields that you wanted, uh, decided if you wanted to collect submissions, what you wanted to do after, a, uh, after that the email was submitted, all of that sort of thing. You've, now we've published it. So now if we go back into uh, our templates, there's our listing contact form and you're gonna see that Elementor gives you a nice little short code there. So we're just gonna grab that. We're gonna go back into our listing type and we're gonna go back to that same email block and we're just gonna swap out Contact form seven short code for our Elementor short code. Now let's refresh our listing here. If I can find it, here we go. There we go. So just that easy, you can add uh, either one of the either type form that you'd like to add. Okay. Uh, okay. So I've ran my test over here. Let's bring this back. So then if you look at a, a test from webpagetest.org, uh, one of the really nice features is the waterfall. And you can find that right here. You click on that. 
scroll down and you'll see these render blocking resources. So the, the orange X there. So let's see if, if the contact form seven assets are render blocking. Uh, I think we, yeah. Let me see if I can do a search here. Uh, Style.css. No, can't search. Um, if you click on, the, on one of these two, like you see here, it'll show you where it's coming from. Kind of help you. Uh, da, da, da. So it's not that, it's not that. There it is, right there. So that's the problem. At the very, near the very top, number five, contact form seven is, is, is loading render blocking CSS. So what that means is none of this stuff down here, none of this stuff down here, so, or 26 or 28, so um, the header CSS can load after all of this CSS up here loads, or and JS. Um, I'm guessing, yeah, I don't know. Uh, somewhere in here is the contact form seven JavaScript as well. But so then after all of these have loaded, then this header CSS can load. Then there's another render blocking asset. Then in the Mapbox CSS can load. And then there's another render blocking and then all this stuff can load. So the, you really want to get all of this render blocking stuff knocked down. That's outside the scope of this, this particular video. Um, but I definitely have guides on how to do this with perf matters and I show people and there's going to be more to come in this area as well. I'm going to do a live event where we, we tackle this sort of thing. Um, but that's it. That's what I wanted to show you that that's where it's coming from. And there's no contact form seven plugin on this page. Oh, well, actually, uh, I lied. Let's take this off here. I thought we removed it. So let's go back here. Okay, we've updated our page. So there's no contact form seven on here. Let's run this again. Okay, while that's running, um, Let's wrap this part up, I think. I think I've shown you everything I want to show you. I keep saying that and I come up with something else, but um, I think we've covered it all. How, why you should use um, Clean Talk over reCAPTCHA, why you should use Elementor Pro um, Forms over Contact Form 7. Um, our test is done here. Let's look at this again. So here we go. Render blocking resources. There we go. Our contact form is not on the home page. Let's refresh. It's not on the home page. Let me go let me go a step further here to prove it even more. Let's go to uh, I'm going to go clear um, the CDN cache. Okay, bear with me one second. I'm going to log into Cloudflare. Do, 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 do. And then I'll show you how to clear the, the cache completely and in which order. Okay, so I'm clear, getting ready to clear. Um, I'm getting ready to clear Cloudflare, but I'm going to show you the correct order to do this in. Okay, so I've got Cloudflare ready to go. I'm going to close down some of this stuff. Okay, so the order that you, the, again, every website's different. Uh, I use Keensta. I use Cloudflare at the edge. That's my caching. Cloudflare does the edge caching. I use Keensta for my hosting. That's the server. And then I do server level caching at Keensta. And then I do not use a caching plugin because with Keensta, you don't need one. Okay. 
So there's, there's no WP Rocket. There's no uh, whatever plugin else out there that's for, for caching. You don't need any of that stuff if you're on Keensta. Okay, so I'm gonna show you the correct order to clear stuff in. So the first thing you wanna do is Elementor and then Tools. Regenerate your files and data. And then if you're on Keensta, uh, well, so before that, let's back up. So the very first thing is to regenerate your CSS and data from Elementor, okay? That's number one. Number two, if you have a caching plugin, that would be next, clear it at the plugin level. Next up, if you're on Keensta, then use the, the built-in clear cache to clear the server level cache, okay? So we've done that. So we've done Elementor, we've done the server level. Now I'm gonna clear it on Cloudflare. And I'm gonna go back here and I'm gonna rerun this test again. So we've cleared out all of our caching. Let's just rule out that, that that's not the, the um, let's rule out that the contact form seven assets are not hung up somewhere. Let's just see what, see what happens here. All right, there we go. Number five, still there. It's loading at the top of the waterfall as a render blocking resource on the home page, even though there is no form. Okay, bad stuff. Okay, guys, I'm gonna wrap this up. Um, I think I've harped on recaptcha and contact form seven enough. Hope all is well. Remember to hit that subscribe button so I can continue to be motivated to do these videos for y'all. And uh, I'll talk soon. Let's talk soon.